He come and go in accordance with destiny. He becomes content and with senses under control. He neither desires nor grieves. This is from Ashtavakra Gita. Nila Kantanji, can you repeat it? Because there was some internet disruption. Meaning. One who knows for certain that success and adversity come and go in accordance with destiny. He becomes content. With senses under control, he neither desires nor grieves. Ashtavakramita. You know, this is the biggest challenge for ego. When, when we say destiny, my God, it will create a storm among people, you know. People have strong willpower and they have changed their destiny. They were born in a poor family, uneducated parents. Now they have made a huge empire or whatever it is. How can they say the destiny has given them? They have done hard work. They have gone a hard yard. And so that type of mind can never surrender. And that mind, even when it goes into any practice, practice will continue, but the ego will stay. And whatever the achievement person wants will be with the ego, not without ego. If we understand the subtle truth, you know, then the journey becomes very easy and simple. It is all about contemplation into that. That wisdom which is within us, which never changes. I'll give you a very simple example. When do you feel at peace? When the biggest thing which you wanted to do, you have finished successfully. You think you have done a good deal and now you are in a resting state. Because your mind was so much occupied by that very thing. Because your mind was thinking it is very, very important and I have to finish it, I have to do it. Whatever comes on the way, I have to achieve this. And then one fine day you finish the task and now you are so happy. This happiness is because all those thoughts related with that thing have disappeared. You are free from those thoughts. People think that work what we do brings happiness. Completely wrong. It is inaction which brings happiness. But someone who is running, 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 running and marathon and sweating and, and you know, in pain and all and then when the race stops, he is 
in a resting state which he is now enjoying. But Bhagawan says very clearly how stupid that person is who is running. He gives an example that a person who is in scorching heat and then he sees a shade and comes into the shade and feels calmness. But then again goes back into that scorching heat and when it gets burnt then comes back again. Why can't you just stay in this shade? Why you have to be in doership mode all the time? Achiever, enjoyer, the one who is indulging. And every time we get burnt doing all those and then and then tries to come back. So this freedom from ego is a very gradual process for most of the people. What happened with Bhagwan or King Janaka is a very rare event. Mostly it happens gradual. Understand all this peace and knowing your beloved in your heart as you can only happen when all this projected mind in doership mode gives up all efforts becomes effortless and rest in this beautiful resting place, then it sees. Don't take this as laziness. It is not laziness. It is that pure stillness in which activities can even increase if it has to increase, but it does not affect any person within which is affecting right now because that person disappears in that stillness because in reality there is no person it is only an image imagery it is delusion it is just a thought only that I am doing I am achieving and so Bhagwan again gave us a beautiful thing that it's all play of destiny so doership should go. Understand why he is saying this. And why this, not Bhagwan, this Nila Kantanji has read is from Ashtavakra Gita. Don't think that what is written, don't get into this whether it's right or wrong, but understand why it is important. If you believe in this and you follow this, lot of your unnecessary worries and activities about future, about past will disappear. If you get 10,000 or 100,000 thoughts in a day, at least you can get rid of 99% if you believe on this theory. Then your thoughts about the what has happened in life, what's going to happen in life, they will all disappear. If you have a firm belief that all oh, this is a play of destiny or maya, And because then you will be contented with whatever is happening. It's not that you will not be doing what the body will require according to destiny, still it will do. And the second thing Bhagwan says so beautifully is that if it is in your destiny, even if you don't move your finger, it will happen. And if it is not in de your destiny and you try your best, all you put all Herculean efforts, it is not going to happen. Again, it gets you out of this doership mode of ego. These are the purest teachings you can get. Please don't argue with these teachings. If you argue, you are boosting your ego and you are going into hell, which you are already are in. But maybe a deeper hell. Because arguing doesn't help. Arguing is only winning your ego. Ego against whom? Even if let's say you win an argument. Are you free? How to attain that freedom? By 
quietening your mind forever because the only veil right now is disturbance of the mind which continues and it's not just a disturbance of mind you think you are that mind and you follow it there are two aspects of this bondage one is there is a mind which is super active we have fed it with so many desires attachments likes dislikes judgment all coming from that personhood now it is just producing all these incessant number of thoughts if you understand it is just mind producing thoughts and you are separate then also you are free but the problem is that we stay within that domain of the mind as a person there is no witnessing in it witnessing means your uninvolvement in all these thoughts and actions of the body when at the ego level you witness you don't witness it is not a true witnessing i'll tell you how to find the correct place within you in which the witnessing is happening in the purest form or at the egoistic level if in witnessing you still feeling restless anxiety attachments inclined towards a feeling emotion a concept you are still involved how are you witnessing you are involved you are still at the lower plane of existence at the ego level inside the domain of mind but if your witnessing is happening from where you are having this panoramic view of everything this body other body is a situation even if there is a thought you can watch it but you are not involved in it you are so separate from it if you can stay as what you actually are with every human being without the thoughts then you are always in bliss and then you are always transparent you know a child till the age of 3 or 4 thinks that what he thinks everyone is thinking the same or his thoughts are transmitted and his mother knows it his father knows it so he always speaks as if everyone knows what he is thinking he is so innocent so pure so if he see something or thinks about something he shouts and says shares with others as if others will also affirm what he is thinking or watching even outside what is coming to mind he thinks it is with everyone then the ego comes after 4 plus or 5 in which somehow he knows that these thoughts are personal so nobody is knowing what i think from here comes ego now he can play games with people now he will not tell the truth he thinks something he will can he can say something else this is deceiving this is this is the sin which we all suffer we think something and we say something and we do something else and we think we are smart we are biggest fool this is a trap which we are all in if our thinking our action and our words are exactly the same then also you are free from your mind at least you are in harmony with everything i can't talk about purity in it and i can't talk about end of suffering but at least you are honest enough but when you give up your unnecessary actions which are only serving this particular body then you come into that peace because lot of activities lot of your actions drop
because understand lot of our actions are for entertainment for indulgence for personal happiness for the happiness of this body and this mind when you attain the supreme bliss within you there is no need for any external agency to make you happy only person who can be in that eternal happiness is who is not dependent on any external agency for their happiness understand this simple truth if let's say a game brings happiness and tomorrow your wrist is broken and you can't play golf you will be unhappy because your happiness is in this game or if your happiness is in a person and that person leaves you you will be unhappy so anything any being any situation which makes on which you are dependent for your happiness is making you slave that is what bondage is We, when we are seeking happiness in external things that's what all this gamut of indulgence which we are some people are into something some are into other thing but everyone is in something or the other and we waste all our life in those activities and then we come to the end when we can't move our finger when we can't speak our word when we can't hear anything when the death comes over us when the body is unable to do any activity then comes intense fear because now whatever i am dependent on i can't do it and because our attachment to this doership is so much that leaving this body immediately we get into another body if we are so much attached our attachment give rise to another body otherwise we can be free forever when we understand that bliss is within us in inaction i'll tell you another thing very easy to understand if you can let's say if it is the action which brings to moksha or freedom then everyone has different capacity to action then maybe the one who has big muscles or athletic can do more action maybe the one who is more intellectual has iq of 160 might figure out better that means in this race of liberation there will be winners and losers some will achieve some will not but it is the opposite it is achievable by everyone who comes into in action now in action everyone is equal <laughs> everyone can get into in action here we are all equal in in action on the other hand the one who is really into action for him to put the brakes on is so difficult but that humble person who is hardly in any action it is much easier for him or her so this is in inaction in that stillness in non doership we are all same in achievements you can be different and achievements again that's why we say it is the part of the mind body and destiny achievements nothing to do with you you are not this body so achievements are of the body going with the destiny who are you when you question yourself and get out of this doership constant doership where there is no rest when you look into that you can free yourself from all this gamut of things but first you have to get rid of this 
I am doing, I am achieving, I am losing. Pride and guilt all coming from this imaginary ownership of this body-mind. And this can only go away if you start witnessing. That will disentangle you from this. A very simple technique you can do for two minutes every day. Try to just be with yourself. Find a time when you have no gadget, no person, no agenda. Nothing, nothing external to you. And just be. See how peaceful it is when you are not doing anything. Some people's mind is so busy all the time that it will say it is boredom or you have this is unta- unfinished task, you have to do it. But just be firm with your conviction that this is my resting time. And see how blissful that is. Every night we go into deep sleep when we lose our identity and that is most blissful. If you think these sense organs work constantly, that is also not right. You see, if you talk, 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 you don't want to talk, you will move out from people, you just want to rest. If you keep seeing one movie after the other, let's say you love to watch serial movies, there will be time then you don't want to watch, you just want to close your eyes. So there is, there is a limit even to sense organs to keep doing what they are doing. But let's say you see but you don't see. That means you are not attracted or repulsed by the vision in front of your eyes. You hear but you don't hear. You are not looking for a nice music and things are noisy for you or you want to. Same is with taste. Let's say everything you are so impartial and neutral. How much you will be in bliss? And anyone can do these simple experiments with things, you know. Initially, those sense organs will cry for help and will say that I want this, you know, like a child. But if you just accept whatever comes on your plate to eat or in vision or in ear, then the silence will take you. Silence will take you over. I know some people always want something switched on, their radio, their TV, something, music, or they will be talking or they will be listening. Only time we spend with our pure self is when we are in perfect silence, in stillness, when nothing is happening around us and we are not interested in anything. If you taste this bliss of your own self, that company of your own self, then nobody has to teach you how to stay in that company. Then you would be happy for others to win all arguments. You would like to be loser to all these arguments and Because what you have found, nobody knows and you can keep quiet. This is a constant meditative state which you can attain to if you like it. When we talk about inaction, 
when you have no doership in anything then it is always in action then you are in that blissful self witnessing things happening then you never give credit that i am doing this or this good goodness has happened maybe in day to day talk people might say but you have no doubt about it that things just happens but in that stillness body acts perfectly and whatever your profession things that intention does its job in the perfect way in that impartial state because now the energy is flowing like the flood gates are open it is not condensed into the small egoistic identity once you experience that freedom of that awareness you never want to be that small egoistic person again even if let's say i always say it's a one way path but let's say it's an open path you can again slip back into egoistic who would like to do that who wants to suffer and behave like stupid with slow practice in this witnessing mode with silence with peace with the stillness and a joy which has no reason when it percolates it spreads its unfoldment can be felt by others around you then who wants these small achievements of life and being happy about those things when you are in that infinite bliss this is real independence now you are not dependent on any external object for happiness happiness is your real nature but now there is no person there to feel happy the person gone and the happiness is there it is only the person which was obstacle for you to realize this happiness nobody is a person we only assume and then live whole life like that we are as real as a person as in the dream where we have a body and then there are other bodies the moment you start accepting this truth a big change happens within you you start settling in your own peace this is the first time you're not even dependent on this body and you are not dependent on mind and definitely not dependent on anything in this world first time you are self reliant people who talk about self reliance i will do it i am self reliant it's all full of ego and thinking i am this body and i am these thoughts and i am an achiever this self reliance is transcendental it has nothing to do this with this world even with this body mind which is part of this world only
This pure self-reliance is beyond time and space, one with Absolute. Where you feel no difference between you and anything else, because everything what you perceive, mind can differentiate good or bad or ugly or whatever, but you know it is just a projection of my own mind. Nothing is separate, nothing is outside. Everything is part of the same connection. Everything is entangled together as one. Even physics is proving this, you know, in quantum physics. Last year, Nobel Prize was given to three physicists. And they gave this theory of quantum, not theory, but they also did a lot of good experiments to see, to show how this quantum entanglement works. When at subatomic level, even two particles, you make them separate any amount of distance away, they are still behaving together. Because they are coming from the same observation. If you take away the observer, then there is nothing there. We don't have to understand physics or quantum physics for that matter to understand ourselves. If we simply give up this egoistic mind, egoistic mind means the mind which you live in the mind and you, you hear those thoughts and you think these are for you and you are part of it. Even if you can detach yourself as these thoughts are external and not personal, nothing to do with you then this unfoldment will happen in you you will settle in your own heart so people who have very instant enlightenment or instant opening are the one who just drop everything at, the, at one go Perhaps they hardly has, have any attachment. They just wanted to understand, that's all. It is not that you have to be spiritual to understand. Sometimes in normal day-to-day -day things happens in a way by which you understand all this going in mind and relation and situation and pressure of things, it's just in the mind. It's not at all real to create stress to me. Today I met someone and she gave, she had a, such a profound wisdom. She said, I'm busy with kids and all and but sometime it has happened that sometime everything, something, something just, everything just drops together and I'm in so much of bliss and I don't know what happens, how it happens and then Again, I am pulled out into all these things happening. This can also happen when you are really fed up of whatever is happening. You have no interest and it can happen. And then the mind again comes because of your attachments and then you are again drawn into it. Be in your own presence. Your own presence means you're not taking any guidance from the thoughts or mind or environment or people or from things. Try to just stay as you are, not even using any practice. What practice awareness has to use? Only ego has to use some practice to become egoless. But if you understand and you just stay like that, 
in your own presence and start with one minute or two minutes. See how blissful it is and then extend it more traveling by car or going to work or washing dishes or having a shower, going for a walk. So many times in a day you are just on your own. Then extend it to doing simple things in which you can still be there. And then even when someone is arguing with you, you can still be there. It is just and then and then you realize that there is no effort needed to be there. It is our natural state. We are always blissful and peaceful. Then in a group to win any argument looks like wastage of time, you know. You just give up. Even when you know everything, you don't want to say anything. Because you are so much contented with your own silence, your own bliss, and you don't want to move from there. Then hundreds of activities goes away. Because if you see activities are what? Going to watch a movie, so I can indulge my vision, my hearing, going to eat some in a nice restaurant so I can indulge my taste buds, you know. Want to visit few places, then I can enjoy, you know. There's nothing wrong in doing, but I'm just trying to make you understand how this supreme bliss takes over hundreds of your actions. Saves a lot of money also, I believe. You can be happy in your own own house, just sitting in a room. Because we are ignorant fools who are running for all these enjoyments. We think enjoyment will bring us happiness. If you are happy, even doing these acts, you will be happy. Not doing these acts, you will still be happy. Acts have no happiness in it. Only egoistic mind makes you feel like that. Because of its habits and addictions. Otherwise, if alcohol has all the happiness, then the then why some people don't like to have alcohol? Why it is so bitter, you know? Not everyone likes it. Or with anything. Then in this awareness when you move, because you are in so much of peace and you are also contented and happy, there is no need to do so many things which we do. Worst thing what we do is we keep trying to please others because we think then others will admire us and I'll feel happy. (laughs) Then you will not be very interested to throw a big party, spending a lot of money to show others, to buy a car so people can get impressed. You can still, maybe you can still buy a costly car, but there's no need. You don't feel like impressing anyone for any reason. Lot of activities drop. Almost everything drops. First time you become genuine. What the body requires, the movement that happens. That boredom goes away. Understand that boredom is only at the level of mind. Self never gets bored because it is eternal. It is only one. They are not even two.
everything is coming out of that one self and your self and my self is not different it is the same self in that stillness we come to the same place all of us this movement of the body and movement of the mind and changing situations they are all witnessed in that awareness but but awareness because it is uninvolved it doesn't get affected by it there can be a small reaction to any big change but it's momentary it, it is in its stillness it can still share the joy and sorrow of the fellow others coming in the but that awareness of the truth stays momentary cloud of any situation is not going to hide it is as if you have moved beyond the clouds you are in that sunshine that now any situation any changes at mind don't touch you at all so the body behaves and acts from that supreme authority you can say not from the lower tendencies so far it lives because it has its own destiny so then your destiny as self is not the destiny of the body your body's destiny is not your destiny this is what a gyani realizes in this awareness so this question of destiny also never arises because when you are not the body then body stays or suffers or goes away then there is no owner of the body and this realization is the key point in our happiness because see all our efforts are for this body only which we think ours and then sense organs and we keep working for this body day and night pleasing it and then what is the result end result it turns into dust and then where are you just understand if all these actions done by the body to please the body are so important then the body should stay isn't it if that god or absolute had why it wanted to finish it off all all our efforts and we build a beautiful house we do all those things and we create try to create an empire and then what happens the one who is creating disappears and whole world is lives everyone in this world lives like they are never going to die as death comes to someone else actually if you see in reality this is the deepest truth but we don't live from that truth we live at the ego level as if we are eternal this is the fallacy and this is the cause of suffering if you live as what you are then you are eternal yes no death to you but living at a low level 
in at a selfish level as ego and behaving as you are going to live forever what do you call as sin or foolishness i don't know that's what the whole world is living cheating others creating an empire treating others badly it is all happening in like our in our dream projection of our own mind and then one day disappearing if you spend 2 minutes with your own self every day if 2 minutes is more maybe 1 minute maybe 30 seconds every day and this grace will dawn on you if you have just 30 seconds or just with you where you have surrendered everything and you're ready whatever happens and you are complete in an action accepting whatever comes ready for anything accepting wholeheartedly not as if someone is just pressurizing you just accepting everything as it is and if you can accept for 30 seconds and you feel how blissful it is naturally you want to extend it further and this extension will take you there permanently and when you abide in self then all these scriptural teachings becomes your own word because you realize i was never a doer doer is someone else who has created this and why should i worry i am just in my bliss even if you have played role in this body as ego but now if you are awakened you can still come out of the play but yes whatever intentionally you have created desires and attachment they will continue its play but that's okay who is ready to move aside and just be a witness and let this game continue the way it has to i don't know does it need courage or efforts i think it only needs your understanding when you understand not understanding only but understanding and then behaving like that otherwise intellectual understanding all books says the same thing but if you don't follow then what is the use ashta vakt said so many time ago then bhagwan said and then thousands have said that
ego melts away by your witnessing and this i thought when it goes away no thought stays they are all holding your i-ness only ahankar your ego the ego goes there is no way thoughts can stay because thoughts are talking only to ego ego gone whom they will talk to to pure awareness now this awareness is impersonal thoughts are always personal that's why everyone gets different thoughts and we become individual but if there is no ego there are no thoughts if there are no thoughts then what is there nothing what is this nothing it is bliss it is peace it is brahman it is shiva it is you it is purity in you don't worry about silence outside it can be noisy in the outside people might be arguing you you might have a bad employer doesn't matter you give up your ego sense and you become blissful understand witnessing has a great power witnessing is very powerful and witnessing is not daydreaming or keep thinking default mode in which people keep thinking and i will do this to this and this person did. that means you are completely involved if you are engrossed in your thoughts witnessing is rejecting all of them at once so where is your attention your attention is on your own self and what is this self this self is not body it has no form it has no name it is nothing it is nothing but you know that you are that let's say you live in a house where you have another 10 inmates and everyone is fighting with each other all the time you are having fights verbal fight physical fights and one day you move to a house where there is no one except you how peaceful it would be i've seen sometimes people are talking to themselves actually i i saw someone who was talking and i thought she was talking to me and i she said no no don't worry i just keep talking to myself who talks to whom we are just talking to those thoughts coming to us you know and then we are answering as if this this is what duality is all about we are creating our own little world that absolute has created and then we create our little world that is duality isn't it what is non duality non duality is that knowledge that we are one and how to move from duality to non duality by just observing being an observer and this observership you don't have to close your eyes or 
people talk about meditation. I don't know what meditation people talk about. Understand it and just be that. What meditation? Who will meditate on whom? That means there are two people. Understand this meditator has to disappear who is doing so many things. He does yoga, he does meditation, he does this, he does that. But he stays. If he stays after doing all this, then you're back to square one. Understanding is enough. And follow that understanding. Start loving your own solitude. We spend time with people and things and always busy, this and that. Now start giving some time to your own self. Your pure self. And slowly become one with it. When you become one with it, that is the end of journey of this life and death cycle in that ego mode. Then you are free from this worldly life altogether forever. It is simple, it is easy, it is doable. It is actually undoing, it is not even any doing. Still if you don't understand, but stay on the path, keep listening, keep practicing. If it is a practice, then yes, this is the practice. Keep meditating on these pointers and saying if that is meditation. Don't again go back into thoughts that someone did something to me, now I have to do this and he did this and bring your energy back here in your heart. Be in the silence, understand what you are. You can only understand yourself in silence, not in that argumentative thought process. You don't have to sort out anything. Nobody is ever able to sort out this world. Just be here in your heart. Don't feel proud of sorting out your wife's issues or your kids' issues or your employer's issue or employee's issue or job issue. If you feel proud of that, you, you are boosting your ego again. You are in doership mode. Somehow when you pay your attention to this energy and you become devotee of it, there is some other power which sorts out everything for you. Understand this truth. Even without you doing anything. You know in India, Indians know this story about Sudama and Krishna. Um, I think in South they call Kuchela, you know, Sudama. So Sudama was the poorest of poor and his wife said, go and get something from Krishna God. He's so rich. Why don't you go and get something? He said, okay. He went and... Um, he was in shabby clothes, poor man and Krishna. He stayed with Krishna, but he couldn't say what he wanted to say. He didn't ask anything, but he was in Krishna, with Krishna, in his love, and completely merged in it. But when he came back, instead of his old hut, there was a palace and everything was there. Elephants and all he has never even thought that he will get that. 
I'm saying it's more a symbolic that when you are in that Shiva, that self, you are absorbed. Somehow it takes care of everything. You don't have to ask for anything. And it knows what is best for you. You surrender, you accept, and things happen. You ask any true doctor who is very, very truthful, he can never say that he healed people. He will say that people got healing on their own. Because same treatment, someone will die and someone recovers completely. Same treatment, same remedy. Why? There is some other power which works in everything, which we never give credit. We give credit to pharmaceutical companies or the doctor takes credit or the patient takes credit or something. We don't give credit to that absolute. Yes, when, when things goes wrong, then we say, then we curse God, our destiny. And when good things happen, then we take all the credit. Be with this energy which is in all of us, which is very impartial, neutral. It does not speak to us. You have to be in silence to be with it. And you can achieve that silence when you are desireless, when you have no other intentions, when you become listener to it, not a complainer. Mostly we complain. When you are complaining, it creates a big distance between you, that pure self and what you think you are. When we start Stay in that stillness. That stillness takes over everything. Shanti, Shanti.